Greetings, Attack and Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm here to bring you yet again another Ultimate Fighter Live episode recap right here on Otaku Assemble Weekly. As always, I'm here to bring you the latest in this week's Ultimate Fighter Live episode recap. And this week's episode, we have representing Team Faber, we have John Kofer. And representing Team Cruz, we have Vince Pichel. Now, before I jump into these fighters, and then, of course, the coaches, the training, and then the fight, I want to discuss Dana White's message to the fighters in this week's episode. I thought it was, I thought that was really, really well done. I thought that was very important and very significant, and I thought it was very meaningful coming from the UFC president, you know, speaking to the guys, trying to keep them motivated, and letting them know that, he knows what it's fit, you know what it's like. Um, he knows the effects that the competition has on the fighters, especially this late in the game. And so he wanted to just put things into perspective for them, keep them motivated, and make sure they kept their minds on the end all be all goal. And like I said, coming from the UFC president, I thought that was very important. I know a lot of people give Dana White shit. I personally like Dana White. I don't have a problem with him. I think he's doing the best he can as the UFC president. And I mean, it's like I said, he's no Longwell. He's no McMahon. I think he does a damn good job. So I am I was really impressed by Dana White's speech, and I'm glad that he gave it. But now, now that that's out of the way, I want to talk about uh, the fighters in this week's episode. And first, I want to kick things off with Team Cruz and Vince Pichel. Um Training for the most part uh, in his preparations for this fight were pretty much take down defense. You know, Uriah Faber went on record stating that he chose Bashel because he thought that he had weak takedown defense, which for the most part, I could see why he would think that, and that's probably a reasonable enough assumption. But at the same time, you don't underestimate the guy. And uh, I'll discuss that when I actually talk about the fight. So of course, you know, John Kofer being, you know, big wrestling guy, T, uh, Dominic Cruz and his team, their whole thing was we have to do takedown defense. If the takedown defense is on point, you don't ever have to worry about being on the ground. You never have to worry about the guy out transitioning you. You never have to worry about being in an, uh, an uncompromising position. And you don't have to worry about the, the fight ending on the ground. So I thought that was very important. Now, talking about uh, John Kofer and his training with Team Faber, um, pretty much what they wanted was that they wanted, like I said, they wanted to really um, put Kofer in the position in which he would clearly have the advantage. So, of course, they wanted to accentuate his wrestling ability. Um, I saw that they were working stand-up, and for the most part, I will say this, out of the two fighters, I felt like Kofer's training was actually the more well-rounded. I felt like they were touching on a little bit of everything for that. And then, of course, getting into the fight. Now, I'll have to admit, this was probably one of the better fights of the season so far. And it was definitely a fight that I felt merited the third round. I actually thought that they needed a third round for this fight. Because if you go back and you watch the fight, you pay attention to it. Um, Kofer clearly took the first round because... He was a he was able to dominate as far as the stand-up game goes. It's not like he was uncomfortable on the stand-up. He did a damn good job with the stand-up. Actually, a lot better than I thought he would have. And granted, his footwork wasn't that impressive, but it didn't matter because whenever they locked, you know, whenever they tightened up, got up close, he was able to take care of himself and hold his own. Also, I think that in that first round, he was actually the one that was pushing the fight more than Vince was. I didn't think Vince, you know, you kept you kept hearing Dominic Cruz say, you know, forward, 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 and I didn't think Vince did that. I thought he was too timid. I thought that he was intimidated by Kofer in that first round. But by the time we get to the second round, we see a different uh, Pichel, much different, because he was a lot more aggressive. He was fighting go for broke, and I mean, once they got to the ground and once he was able to get that mounted position, he maintained it for the rest of that round, which was pretty freaking impressive. I mean, especially considering that he was able to get the takedown 
by using the cage to his advantage, but even as Kofi was moving away from the cage and trying to transition out, Vince held him down, held him to the mat. That's actually pretty impressive, and that's why I thought he took the second round. Also, you have to keep in mind how many times he was striking Kofi while he had that position. So I thought that, yes, you needed a third round because Kofi clearly took the first, Pichelle clearly took the second, and so by the time we got to the third round, of course, Pichelle ended it. He wrapped that whole thing up um, which uh, with a very weird submission. It, um, yeah, I, 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 did, I, I did not think he was going to be able to pull that off, especially in that um, in that position, but he did. He managed to pull it off. He managed to get the victory, and so he tied things up for Team Cruz, um, which I don't know if you've all been keeping count. I have. That puts my predictions at five for one. Five predictions that I got right. Only one I got wrong so far in this competition. I don't know about you all. I think that's fucking impressive. I'm actually surprised that um, I'm actually surprised that I've been doing so well with my predictions. However, if you all have been paying attention, okay, the next two weeks won't be much of predictions because my last two guys are the last two to fight. And who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Sam Cecilia and, uh, and Mike Rio. They're the last two for Team Cruz. They have yet to fight. And those are currently my number one and my number three pick to win it all. So I, I guess this would actually wrap up my first round predictions because I got to go with my guys, you know, that I'm rooting for. So that brings me to next week's fight, which is going to be uh, for Team Favor, Chris Saunders versus for Team Crew, Sam Cecilia. And of course, Sam's my number one pick to win the whole thing. I got to go with Sam. Um, I'm really looking forward to what he can do. I think that... Saunders will do a good job in pushing Sam. I don't I don't think Sam is just going to breeze through this fight. I don't. I think it's going to be a battle. Um, and I, to be honest with you all, I, I hope so. I want to see what Sam is capable of. You know, Sam got that, that, that fast knockout win in order to get into the house. And I'm like, nah, I, this dude can do so much more. And I just, I'm hungry to see that. So I'm hoping it will be a good fight. But of course, like I said, I got to go with my man, Sam. In next week's episode so that's going to wrap it up for me this week in the comments below let me know what you all thought about this week's fight and let me know your predictions for next week's fight so with that said this has been larry williams oaw commander in chief i'm signing off and until next week peace